Imagine for a second that you're in the year 2007. You're at Walmart with your mom, so you run over to the toy section and start looking at all the stuff they have. Legos, Bakugan, Pokemon cards, and then out of the corner of your eye, you see it. A little stand filled with stuffed animals and a sign that says Webkins. Curious, you pick up a frog, dog, unicorn, or whatever one you liked, and started inspecting the toy. You see a tag that has the words, Discover a Virtual World. Open tag at home to access secret code. You heard some kids at school talking about this new Webkins thing and how fun it is, so you go to your mom and beg her to buy it for you. After you annoy her enough, she agrees and you have successfully purchased your first Webkins. You get home, crack open the family laptop, and type in webkins.com to start your journey. Now fast forward to 2020. What happened to this game? Where did it go? Where did all of these games go? This whole genre of browser kid targeted MMOs used to be everywhere, but today in 2020 they are seemingly gone or on their way out. Webkins is fading into obscurity, Club Penguin shut down in 2017, Pop Traffic had transitioned into a mobile phone app, and Toontown has been gone for like a decade. Let's take a look at the rise and fall of one of gaming's biggest genres. Let's start from the beginning. In 2003, Disney made Toontown, a virtual online multiplayer game. Now, it wasn't exactly a web MMO, but it definitely kickstarted the genre. In Toontown, players make these characters called Toons and go out into town. There were a bunch of great minigames you could play that would earn you money, and you use that money to go and buy different attacks to fight the enemies of the game. What were those enemies? Well, they were called corporate cogs, stylish robots that wanted to take over the town and make it more quote-unquote business-like. I always found it so weird that the enemies of the game were just corporate people because, well, it's Disney, but we don't have to get into all that. You'd fight these cogs in turn-based fighting, similar to a lot of games from around this time. You could also hang out and socialize with your friends. This was the main drawing point for a lot of people. A 3D game where you could interact with people from all over the world. Toontown did pretty well for itself for a couple years until its competitors started to come out. In 2005, Gans, which was just a stuffed animal company at the time, said, screw those 3D graphics, screw that downloadable game, we have stuffed animals, and then made Webkins. Webkins was an entirely new breed of toys. You took the plush toys business, then tossed in the new hot thing, online gaming, and kids went nuts for it. You got to have your stuffed animal, and you were able to interact with it just like in every kid's dream. It was an amazing combo that made for some explosive success. You really don't realize how big this game was until you compare it in Google Trends or Club Penguin. Webkins at its best point nearly doubles the popularity of Club Penguin, and rightfully so. There was a lot to do in this game. The minigames list was massive, there was the curio shop, the wishing well, tournament style games, customizing your home, and so much more. It was basically like a virtual city for stuffed animals. I had a great time playing this one, and it really brought back some good memories revisiting it. Club Penguin began as a project by a few buddies in the year 2000. Their goal was to make a kid-friendly social game. However, the game we all came to know and love was released a few months after Webkins in 2005. Club Penguin had some pretty great success in its early first couple of years, earning 3.9 million users by the end of 2006. The game really ended up taking off in 2007 though, when Disney bought it. Toontown was slowing down and Webkins was getting larger, so Disney made the smart move of buying Club Penguin for $350 million. The main difference I see between Webkins and Club Penguin is the social interaction and the mini games that they offered. Club Penguin had far fewer games overall, but it had a few that were really well polished. Jetpack Adventure, Kart Surfing, The DJ Booth, Catching Waves, and my favorite, Card Jitsu. The game also simply put more of an emphasis on social interaction. You could talk, interact, and play games with other people, which made it a lot more intriguing. It was really sad to see this game go out when it did in 2017, but Club Penguin Rewritten is still up and going strong if you guys want to check it out. Last but certainly not least on this list is Pop Tropica, released in 2007 by Pearson Education Company. You might know them as the place where you access a lot of your online textbooks. The primary creator for this game was actually Jeff Kinney though, the author of the famous Diary of a Wimpy Kid books. Pop Tropica was great, but definitely more of a quest and storytelling game than an MMO. There were all of these different islands in game, each with an in-depth scenario and a mystery you had to solve. There were some mini games that you could play with others of course, but they were never really that great, and most people played it simply for the storyline. It was a really fun game to play and explore, but after a while of creating new islands, Pop Tropica started to slow down. They saw the popularity of their site going bad and decided to do something about it in 2014, releasing the Pop Tropica app for mobile devices. The web version was still available, but a shell of its older self. There are less islands, less things to do, and definitely less players. I honestly had a great time playing this game when I was younger and have a bunch of good memories from it, but it never really returned to its former glory. 
So what happened to all of these games? Why did the whole genre fall off the map? Well, these games didn't lose popularity due to them being fundamentally bad, but through a combination of not adapting quick enough and other types of content eating away at the market. In the early 2010s, tablets started to become widely available and the prices on them started dropping. This allowed for newer and easier to play games to appear. This also made for easier consumption of videos on YouTube and other streaming platforms taking away from the time kids spent playing games. The existence of tablets also gave kids a cheap way to have their own device to use without having having to bother their parents to borrow one of their home computers. Right around the same time, PC technology was advancing quick, which allowed for services like Steam to gain popularity. Because of Steam, way more games became offered to people in a very clean way. Downloadable games allowed for better graphics, better frames per second, larger games, and better engines. This ultimately led to kids swarming these new faster paced and frankly better looking games. Minecraft for example took a huge part of the market from these games. It was simple to run, to understand, and only took a few hundred megabytes of memory to install. Console gaming also started to gain a lot of popularity, and devices like the Xbox One and PS4 both coming out in 2013 made for very simple, high-quality gaming. Comparing Call of Duty Ghosts to Webkins, you can start to see why people started choosing these newer games instead. The web MMOs that many of us fell in love with started to go out of style. They just couldn't keep up with the growing industry of children's media. To put the final nail in the coffin, .io games like Agar, Slither, and Crunker started to gain popularity exponentially in 2015. These games ate away at the last bit of market share web MMOs had. In the end, the industry behind these games was changing, and the company behind these games decided it would be a better idea to move on to new games rather than to spend a lot of time and resources improving what they already had. And honestly, I can't blame them for that. They had their time to shine, and they knew when the time was up. It's sad to see these games die out, but it's awesome to see their journey and all the games that were inspired by them. Anyways guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this quick look at this industry of games. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate some feedback, and dropping a like or sub is super helpful and really appreciated. Anyways, thanks again for watching guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.